All right, welcome everybody to another Strictly B-Ball video. We have a very special guest today, Max Bonster. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hey everybody, I'm Max. I, I do reporting for the, junior, for the Junior NBA as well as Sports Illustrated. And I've had a lot of cool experiences with some awesome players. So I'm lucky to be where I'm at and I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Awesome, yeah. So you've said that you are a reporter. When did you, I know you got into it at a very young age. When did that, that start off for you? So when I was um, about to turn 12 years old, actually, uh, I saw this competition online to become a Sports Illustrated Kids reporter. And it was on the Sports Illustrated website. And basically what you had to do was fill out um, an application where you submitted like an article about someone in your community who was changing people's lives through sports. And it could be anything. And so, you know, 12 year old me, 11 year old me was like, I got to try this. So I quickly, you know, talked to my, my parents, like I, I did some research, found out um, that uh, Coach Hurley from uh, St. Anthony's High School in New Jersey, which is really close to where I used to live, uh, I was a good guy to interview. So I, I talked to him. I drove down uh, to St. Anthony's, talked to some players, talked to a, a player named Jagan Mosley, who actually went on to play four years at Georgetown. He just graduated. Um, so I made that connection with the player and the coaches. And I just, that was the first real interviews that I, that I did to start my career. Um, so I wrote an article about that, submitted it. And I think in late October or something around that, and I was supposed to get my response back by around December and it came to like February and I hadn't heard anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I didn't get it. You know, I tried and it was yeah. fun interviewing those players. But then like towards the end of February, I randomly get an email saying, you've been chosen as one of like 15 kids in the country to be a Sports Illustrated kids reporter. And I was like, what the heck? Like, no way, you know? And well, it was just- Have you turned 12 so, at this point? I, my birthday's in March, so I was just about to turn 12. Wow. That's um, and so I was, you know, like, what the heck? Like, what does this even mean? Like, what do I get to do now? So I obviously got to find out that I would be getting like credentials for a lot of cool events. And so I, that's when I started working for, with Sports Illustrated. Um, I did a lot of NCAA tournament games and then a couple of my clips went viral from the NCAA tournament. Like specifically, um, I interviewed coach Frank Martin from South Carolina after um, an NCAA tournament game and, uh, they, they won. And I asked him a question in the press conference room and I was the only kid. And that question went viral because he just had a great response. He was like, wow, what a question. You know, I've been yeah. doing this for so many years and no one's ever asked me that. I, I got to respect, I got some respect for you, kid. And that was kind of a changing point for me. And so after that, um, I started talking with the junior NBA. I made an appearance on the Tonight Show. And I've just kind of yeah. had some great experiences from there. Did you ever, like, because, like, you look at all the interviews you've done and all the clips, right? And you you always say super composed. Like, you, the, your composure throughout it is, is incredible. Um, but in the moment, especially being, like, at a younger age, did you ever feel, like, like nervous or get, like, butterflies to some degree? Listen, man, of course. Who, who yeah. doesn't get nervous, you yeah. know? It was just, I, I think that from that experience and just um, doing so many interviews, I kind of like built an immunity. But at first, yeah, I, I think one of my first things I ever did besides the um, uh, Coach Hurley interview with St. Anthony's was I interviewed the Villanova team in the NCAA tournament and I went to their locker room and I, I, I'm a huge basketball guy, right, even before this. So there's players in there like Daniel Ochefu, Ryan Archidiakno, oh, yeah. um, all these people that I look up to. Uh, and I walk in, like Josh Hart was in there, right? And That's all it. of a sudden, I'm three feet away from all of them. And I was nervous. Yeah. But but I think that they're, you know, they were all so nice to me. They all, they all like, were like you know, for all these other older reporters, they're kind of like, yeah, what's your next question? But for me, since I'm like an 11-year-old, 12-year-old kid in there, they brought me into the back and they were like, let's take a team photo. So I have a photo of me with the entire Villanova team in the first round. And they went on to win the championship that year. That's so that's, cool. sick, man. that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So kind of on the bouncing off of that a little bit out of all the players you've met, like who would you say is the nicest one or just pick like a certain moment where like a player was extremely nice to you? Yeah. Um, I think that current players, there's been a lot. Uh, Ryan Archidiakono, when I went into that Villanova locker room was incredibly nice as well as Daniel Ochefu. Daniel Ochefu was my first player to ever follow me on Instagram That's and awesome. I remember I screenshotted it and I posted it on my Instagram because I was like everyone 
10-year-old Jeff who followed me. Yeah. And it's just kind of cool to see how far I made it from there. But um, so those guys were all really nice. Jo- Jordan Bell, he, he played at Oregon and he's yeah. also mm-hmm. an NBA now. I've made a good connection with him. There's a lot of players, but I think that overall the nicest has been Kobe. Okay. Um, yeah. Because you know, I just spent I spent so much time with him, and I felt like I had such a cool connection with him. T- tell us a little bit more. So nice. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. So I know you've have you interviewed him maybe twice. I, I've seen two videos. One where you're sitting on a couch. Actually, funny story. Uh, back when we started our <laughs> our TikTok account, we just posted like random basketball clips that we found that were like really cool. Our first, if you scroll to the bottom of our page, our first post is that video of, of you and Kobe. It was, <laughs> it was uh, when you asked him um, his his favorite basketball moment, and he said it was yeah. his his daughter's first bucket. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So I've interviewed him twice now. Uh, last March, when I was covering the NCAA tournament down in LA area, I went to his office, and we did a really good interview. That was the last time that I saw him. Um, but then I also interviewed him on the Tonight Show, obviously. So I got to spend a lot of time with him, and he was just so so nice. I never, I know, I think he was just, he, you know, what the part that really stood out to me was that he like treated me like a normal person. You know, like he looked me in the eyes. He's like, "Hey, Max, good to see you again." And you know, it just he's Kobe Bryant. Yeah, and I think like, it's so many people like you have had that same experience with him. Like just, he's so like such a genuine, such a gen, he was such a gen, genuine person. So, so when, yeah. so when you interviewed him on the tonight show, was that the first time that you ever met him? That was, I, I was, Oh my um, God. I was, yeah, that was my first time ever. meeting. Not so much him. pressure to remind me again, how old you were on the tonight show. I think yeah. I was 13. I just turned 13, I believe. So, so um, not only are you stepping onto the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, you're meeting Kobe Bryant for the first time. That, that's pretty. Yeah. 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 Luckily, luckily I got to meet him backstage before I had to go out there. I, okay, I think yeah, I, I would have, I, I, I think I would have froze if I just got yeah, out like there just, that with Kobe Bryant. I would have completely but froze. I, I was backstage and um, I was going to my dressing room that they gave me and it had a big sign for like Max Bonstetter on it. And then right to the left of that was another dressing room with another big sign that said Kobe Bryant on it. So we had identical dressing rooms, me and Kobe Bryant, which was just like, yeah, yeah. Like I, I felt like I didn't deserve it, but um, yeah, I, I met him backstage and then uh, Jimmy Fallon also, I, I got introduced to him and I, I was walking. Um, so two hallways met, right. And I was walking down the hallway and J- Jimmy was walking from the other hallway and Kobe was walking from the other one. And we all intersected at the same time. And I was like three feet behind them and they dap each other up and they're like, Hey, Jimmy, hey, Kobe, so nice to see you. You know, like haven't seen you in so long. I'm so excited for tonight. And then they both turn to me and I'm just like, Oh my. And they're, and, and they're like, this is Max. Jimmy's like, this is Max. He's a sports Illustrated kids reporter. Um, he's had a lot of cool interviews. He's going to be talking with us tonight on the show. And Kobe was like, Hey Max, pleasure to meet you. And I was just like, that that I think if you want to hear about a starstruck moment, that was my starstruck. That was moment. that was it. number one. Yeah, yeah. Geez. yeah. We were gonna ask that like your most starstruck moment, but I don't think. I mean, it's kind of hard to top that. When did I don't you, think anything matches that? When did you yeah. meet LeBron for the first time? Because I know you've you've asked him a question. Maybe you haven't met him, but just kind of asked him a question. Yeah. So LeBron's always been one of my guys that I've been trying to get to for years. Like I've gone almost everybody, but LeBron is just impossible to get to because every event that I've been at where he's been there there's just been a swarm of media around him it's literally if you want to get a question you have to wait like an hour and um that like there always be other players that wouldn't have any media around them but then everyone's trying to get LeBron and so um it's kind of been like a mission for me like a bucket list goal to get a question for LeBron and when I was at the most recent NBA All-Star weekend uh, there was a media day and again, huge swarm around him. But this time I was like, I got to get a question. So I snuck my way into the front cause I'm one of the shorter people and I waited and waited. And then I just kind of, you have to be aggressive, you know, like you gotta just get your question. in. so I just like talked over someone else, got my question in. And that was the first time that I ever had a conversation with LeBron. And right when I asked my question, he was like, how old are you? And I said, I'm 16. He's like, what's your name? And I said, I'm Max. 
And then he said, I like that name. Um, one of my, one of my kids, his middle name is Maximus. Yeah. So that's a good name. And I said, thanks, LeBron. And then he's <laughs> like, what was your question again? And then he, I asked him my question. And that was, a, that was another star strike moment for me. That was my first time talking to LeBron James. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. And you, like we said earlier, like you always stay pretty cons- composed. Um, and I'm sure like, with with most people like LeBron asked your age and uh, and definitely when you were younger most people are like how old is this kid because honestly it's surprising to see a, a kid and you're a little bit older now and you're pretty good at it now but even when you're like 12 years old I, I saw some interviews it's like this kid is actually like like really good so like how have you always just kind of been good at asking questions and like how what is your process with, for like coming up with with really good questions um I think a majority of the time that I'm asking my questions, I'm the only kid in the room. And it's all these like 60 and 60 plus year old people. Um, and so I try to always think of something that could catch the players off guard or like something untraditional, because I think that they're kind of sick of getting the same boring questions. And so I normally, I'll look at the, I'll get my like stats sheet. I'll look at what stands out to me. Uh, and I'll, I'll, of course I'll do my research before the games. I, I normally know every player and the coaches and I just try to think of something that stands out to me. Uh, that's, that's mostly my, my process, but I think that since I'm such a big basketball fan, it, it kind of just comes to me. Yeah, for sure. Would you say you're more of a fan of the NBA or NCAA college basketball? I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I love college basketball. Okay. College, Why college are you basketball. Not to do that? Oh, because I mean his involvement <laughs> pro- with the junior NBA, right? Yeah. I'm I'm probably not supposed to pick, but I I love I love college basketball. I love both, but it, it's co- pretty college basketball. Pick. You know, it is tough to pick. They're both so great, but for college basketball, college basketball for me is just the best thing ever. Like March Madness, March it doesn't Madness. get any better. It doesn't get any better than that. No. As good as as good as the NBA is and the storylines of the NBA, I think March Madness for me just pretty much tops anything in sports honestly oh yeah yeah it was, it was very depressing to to see it come to or not even start with the whole pandemic going on that was very unfortunate which oh i was so next March Madness, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one for sure oh yeah who are your, teams? Who are your favorite teams like have you been Again, uh, not, supposed not supposed to have right? favorite teams gotcha. but um my, a lot of my family went to duke so yeah. i've always been a huge duke fan and so a lot of the times i'll i'll like to follow guys that come out of Duke into the NBA and they become some of my favorite players. Like I love like Luke Kennard from the Pistons, uh, Brandon Ingram, Tatum. There's a lot of dudes. Zion. Yeah. Yeah. Ty's Ty's of course. He's from from Minnesota. So he's like both me and Nolan. We really, really love Ty's. We've been watching him since like ninth grade high school. So he's a legend there. Yeah, yeah, he, he is. Because uh, Minnesota doesn't get too many players in the NBA recently. So, yeah, yeah Ty's absolutely. Well, you're about to get Trey Jones, too, right? Wait, yeah, no. and a, uh, Trey Jones, yep. He'll be yeah. drafted this year. Yeah. And a bunch of guys, like, it's starting to – Minnesota's starting to come around for NBA basketball in the next couple of years. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard – have good. you heard of Tyrell Terry from Stanford? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's from Minnesota? Yeah, he's – I think he – honestly, I think he's the sleeper of this draft. Mm-hmm. I saw so I follow a lot of basketball accounts and I, I actually I went to a couple of Stanford games so I've actually I've seen Tyrell play. Yeah. But I saw some people comparing him to like Trey Young, Steph Curry. Exactly. Yeah. He, he's gonna be a late late first rounder, I think he's rejected. So he could be he could be a sleeper. Yeah, for sure. Like I the Timberwolves have the sixteenth pick as well, most likely, unless the Nets just somehow somehow don't make the playoffs. But like I would even be excited to draft Tyrell Terry at number sixteen as a Timberwolves fan. That'd be yeah. sick. Yeah. So what would you say your best basketball moment that you've ever experienced? What is the best moment that you've ever experienced in person? Like a game? Maybe? Like a game you've been to. Okay. I've been to a ton of games. Uh, most of the games I've been to have been the NCAA tournament. And I'm a big fan of upsets. So there's been a couple upsets that I've been to live that have been incredible to watch. Uh, I saw one that stands out to me was when Stephen F. Austin beat West Virginia in the NCAA tournament. I think it was a, um, a 13 seed over a four seed or maybe 14 over a um, yeah. 14 over three. 14 um, three, yeah. Yeah, it was, I think it was a 14 over a three. Yep. And it, it, there was this guy, um, a walk-up, walk-up from Stephen F. Austin. He just went off. He could not miss. And it, it, he single-handedly carried them. 
That yeah. was one of my favorite moments. And then I got to talk to him after the game. That's awesome. And he obviously he, – he was, he was happy to see a kid in there, I think. And so yeah, we, we sure. talked. We talked. I think asking him about that was really cool. Um, but yeah, the upsets are always my favorite. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, I saw Oregon. Uh, they went on a streak in the tournament the year before. Yep. Um, as a 12 seed, they knocked off, I think, Wisconsin. Uh, and also there was um, – uh, UC Irvine had an upset against Kansas State. That was an incredible that game. One, so, didn't didn't Taco go to UC Irvine? It, Taco Taco went or to you at um, U, UCF. 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 Taco yeah. went to UCF. Yeah. Yeah. March Madness. Yeah, doesn't get better than that. Do you do you go to a lot of NBA games like for for Sports Illustrated too? So I've been to a lot of NBA games. I live pretty close to where the Warriors play, so I, I, I used to go to a few Warriors games. Um, but I would say I've definitely been to more college games. Yeah. I love both, though. So um, with Junior NBA, I, I saw that you're kind of involved with them. Uh, what Can you talk about, like, your involvement with, with that? Yeah. So after I was on The Tonight Show, uh, I was put in contact with the Junior NBA and they talked to me. They said they would love for me to do some interviews with them. So I met up with them, um, talked to them about what I could possibly do to work with them. And they've just they've just been um, – they've been great. I, I've gotten credentials from them to go to a lot of cool events. Like I'll go to the NBA drafts, NBA lotteries, um, all that stuff every year. And normally I'll go with the junior NBA. And those have been some of my favorite events that I've covered. Okay. Okay, so – You've you've interviewed Kawhi Leonard, correct? I have interviewed Kawhi okay. Leonard. So a lot of times, like the media portrays him as like a super quiet, um, really laid back, introverted kind of person. So what was your experience like interviewing Kawhi? Um, and how I, I guess how Kawhi... he how he was as a person as well. Like, did he seem a little different? Like, was he portrayed maybe differently in the media than he actually is? Or he was really nice. He was a nice dude. He was willing to answer some questions. Uh, I think when I was interviewing him, there were some other reporters trying to talk to him. And one dude was like, can we hear you laugh? And he was like, stop, you know? Yeah. yeah. But he definitely is on the more quiet side. He, he's okay. quiet. He, he was, um, he, he, it was hard to get words out of him. But I, he seems like a really nice guy. I just think mm-hmm. that he's more quiet and not really, not really a, a, a person for the media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's very – he's just so, like – such an interesting person. I feel like he's definitely to himself. I was yeah, he's at, an was, introvert. Yeah, he, he is. is yeah. He is. And I think that's kind of like led to him being the player that he is. Cause I remember I was listening to Pat Bev on JJ Reddick's podcast and Pat Beverly was like working out with him over the, like the quarantine time. And like, everyone knows Pat Beverly as like a super hard worker, but he said yeah. like Pat Beverly's idea of hard work, like completely changed when he like worked out with Kawhi Leonard, like Kawhi Leonard, him being an introvert, like he just lives in the gym. Like that's, that's all he does. So I think that's definitely led to him being um, the player that he is today. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary too. Like we haven't heard a word from him this entire quarantine. Yeah, exactly. So you you already know he's been, he's been in the lab. For sure. Yeah. Well, I'm scared too, because like once he retires, like how are we going to get media coverage on him? I mean, he has no social media There'll accounts. There's going to be none. And Kawhi's a player. So that's, yeah be so it's gonna he'll, he'll be he'll be in isolation he'll just be you won't hear words in life but just just completely under the radar but it's, it was yeah. kind of similar with with michael jordan like jordan who is completely in the spotlight and obviously he wasn't like an introvert as much as like Kawhi leonard but like since jordan retired he's like a pretty private guy yeah and i think like lebron complete opposite like i think lebron will be in the media talking obviously on social media for until he's like yeah. in, super old. So yeah, he's ex- LeBron is extremely vocal on social media, like kind of on all platforms. So yeah, definitely is. What are your thoughts on, on the NBA this, on this uh, very interesting time? Um, I think that Adam Silver is great and he's handled the whole yeah. thing very well. Uh, it's kind of tough. You know, you don't have very many options. I think that going to Disney World was probably the right move because you just got to get stuff starting again because the, the fans want it. You know, it's been so long since – it's almost been a complete off-season yeah. of waiting. I think it's about, it, we about have the same, yeah. yeah. Almost almost like day-to-day, an off-season of waiting. So the fans the fans need it. Um, you, can only, you can only quarantine for so long. 
And as long as it's safe, I think go for it, right? They're being really, really careful yeah. in, in Disney. Yeah. I think they have the they even have like the people sitting on the bench six feet apart. Um, and I, I've also I've seen a couple of the players like do you know Matisse Thibel from oh, yeah. Sixers? He started a YouTube channel. I've been watching them. The bubble. Yeah, they're really he's good. Been posting, he's been posting some vlogs. And yeah. I watch that and I see like, you know, from the inside perspective where it's like as a player and it seems like they're being really safe. Yeah, they are. So, and I, I just think it's good to get going again. I'm hoping that these, these scrimmage games can just get over it because I want to I wanna see some real basketball, but I, I like yeah. it. I've been watching some scrimmages too. I think, honestly, even though they're just scrimmages, it's just so entertaining uh, to yeah. find watching live sports again. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, we're yeah. all hoop deprived, so just to see live games again, it, it's we are we are hoop deprived. It's, it's it's been cool to see some of those players that have been standing out so far. Like you've seen like Bull Bull. Bull Bull's insane, <laughs> bro. He's been he's been going off. Um, Mikhail Bridges from the Suns. Yep. Yeah. I think in the scrimmage today he had like twenty points in the first half. So oh, wow. It's, it's it's cool to see some of these like young up and coming players kind of shine in these scrimmages. Yeah, one of my favorite guys. Um... I don't know if you saw this, but Jonathan Isaac. Oh, yeah, from the Magic. Yeah, he played seven minutes yesterday because he's coming off an injury. He hasn't played since January. Okay. He had 13 points, made a couple threes, two blocks, and, and two steals or something in like seven minutes. He's like – I think he's going to be a stud, honestly. Yeah, I, I interviewed him um, back when he was at – I think he played at Florida State, so I talked yep. to him back yeah, then. Yeah. And um, I, at the draft, I talked to him. He, he's a great guy. He, he, he has a lot of potential. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Another thing, too, is, like, seeing, like, I don't know, even, like, some of the veterans play good, like, J.R. Smith coming on the Lakers and, and showing out. Like, I feel like that's a such a good pickup because, I mean, he obviously has playoff experience and he has chemistry with LeBron, past experience with LeBron. But he's yeah. been playing good, and that's just just a great pickup for the Lakers. So, seeing him the play. Lakers, yeah, totally. The Lakers have been looking really good. It's yeah. been fun to watch them play. I, yeah. I, like, I like how I saw someone saying um, how the, the difference with the Lakers is that it, it looks like at least all the players on their team. Oh, oh shoot! Can you still hear me? Some yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we can I'll hear you. Over. Sorry, I got a call. Um, it look it looks like it looks like all the players um, with the Lakers are really just enjoying it, and they're not just playing it as a job. You know, I I saw that. I think I saw that exact. Uh, where'd you where'd you see that? Because I think I, I think I saw that exact same. Was it a tweet? Uh yeah, something like that. But. I, I like I like watching them play because like J.R. Smith, uh, Dion, you know, they just yeah, they just go out there and they're, they're just they're just having fun. Yeah, like seeing it even in Javale's vlogs, like the dynamic they have going, like it seems like a super positive thing. So it's gonna be interesting, yeah. it's gonna be crazy to see how it pans out throughout the whole playoffs. But yeah, personally, I think, yeah. personally, I think they're gonna win. But I agree. But anything, I I also think like anything could happen. I could see a team like the Nuggets just kind of upsetting. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, we don't know how teams are going to play without home court advantage or, like, it's just such a, a different environment. Like, I think anything could happen, honestly. There's so Yeah, many. yeah. Even the Lakers. Yeah, this, I mean, excuse me, the Clippers with all the depth they have, like. The Clippers depth. are looking great. Some of, I, I, I think that this is going to be, like, one of the hardest championships to win this year. Yeah. It's anybody's game. Yeah, I agree. Like, some people – and obviously you're, you're in the media industry. So, you know, like I, I think some people will, will say that we'll portray it as like an easy championship or like has an asterisk next to it. And then obviously I, in my opinion, I think it's one of the hardest championships that you can yeah. possibly win. Yeah. It's, it's anybody's game. Yeah. Everyone's looking good right now. Who do you think is a sleeper team? Like near the bottom of each conference, who do you think could maybe surprise some people? Um, you mentioned the Nuggets. I think the Nuggets are looking really good right now, especially you now that they have Michael Porter Jr. and Bull Bull back in action. He was hooping good yesterday. He was. That's that is a scary duo right there. Yeah. Um, I re I really like how they're how they're playing. Um, the Sixers now they've been putting Simmons at at power forward, I believe, or small forward, and they got um, uh, Shake Milton, I think, at the one. one yeah. uh, that's that's it's four, been really helping. I've been watching them play. It's been helping their like spacing. Uh, so the 76ers are looking great right now. Uh, I think <laughs> Simmons has been expanding his his, his range. Um, comfortable out there. So I think the Sixers are looking great. Uh, Lakers and the Clippers obviously are probably the front runners. Um, but oh, of course the Bucks also are looking really good. Yeah. Um, but I I, th I think that there's a couple of teams that we, that we could see um, in the next few years kind of 
be on the rise. Like I like I like the Kings young core. I like the Suns young core. Timberwolves. Uh, so Timberwolves. <laughs> Timberwolves. Oh. They haven't made. They've made some really poor um, trades recently. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like, like trading Levine away for for half a season of Butler. Yeah. Not the smartest, but no. um, you know, th- I think that the next few years will be interesting. The yeah. trade, the trade to uh, acquire D'Lo, that was that. I think that's going to pan out as one of the, one of our good trades. So, because I yeah, mean, yeah. Towns and D'Lo already have past chemistry, um, and then obviously there's some T Wolves fan, T Wolves fan speculating that we're going to Booker, but I don't know. At this point, I feel like that's a little unrealistic. But I guess we'll see. Yeah, that, that'd be not, if yeah, that'd be nice if the Timberwolves get Booker. That'd oh, huge, that'd be yeah. that'd be so nice. But like, even as a Timberwolves fan. Um, like I'm still skeptical about the trade just a little bit because we did did give up our first uh, round pick for next year. In yeah. That trade. So like if we're bad again and that's like another top ten or five pick, that's going to the, another Warriors uh, lottery pick. So that'd be pretty insane. Yeah. Next season the Warriors are gonna be scary too because I mean they're gonna if they if they their luck goes goes good in the lottery. They're going to regardless yeah. they're get a good pick. And I mean, they have Curry and, and Clay back, Draymond obviously too. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. But. Everyone's, everyone's forgetting about the Warriors. They think they're just gone now, but once they get healthy, they're going to be looking good. And also the Nets, I forgot about the Nets. The Nets also are looking great once they get KD back. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how Kyrie and KD mesh together. I, I don't know if they're going to have good chemistry or not, but, and I, I guess both of them coming back from injury, um, obviously an Achilles injury is a pretty, pretty crucial injury so it's gonna be interesting to see how how good katie comes back and how he mm-hmm. comes back so yeah yeah definitely so you um here's another one so you mentioned um when we were just kind of texting that about this conversation that you pretty you learned you had a pretty interesting interview with lonzo about his tattoos could you tell us, yeah. tell us about that there's a plane going over right now you probably can't hear me Actually, I think you're good. I think the AirPods are. It's are good. Fine. Okay. Yeah, we're, good. we're um, good. Yeah. So at the NBA lottery, actually no, at the NBA draft 2017, I talked to Lonzo Ball, and I did. A, I normally will do these rapid fire interviews with some of the players because I don't have much time. Mm. So by rapid fire, what I mean is I'll ask like, okay, um, uh, if you had to play a sport besides basketball, what would it be? Um, you know, stuff like that, and. Yeah. One of the questions I asked Lonzo Ball in an interview clip was tattoos, yes or no. And at this point, he didn't have any tattoos. He was coming into the league as a rookie. And he goes, oh, no, 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 no. He just shakes his head. He's like, no tattoos. And if you look at him now, he's just covered in tattoos. So it's interesting to see what the league can do to you. Yeah. I feel like part of it too, like I, I used to watch like Ball and the Family and his dad was like, su- LeVar was super against like tattoos with like, all of his sons and now every single one of them is like completely tatted up so that's kind of funny but yeah I feel like that's yeah. the big reason why but then i think i actually don't know who got, i think it was leangelo who got a tattoo first and then they all just started getting them so but yeah i've, I've talked to lavar before he, he's he's funny really? yeah when i was at the um nba draft they have all their all the players sitting at tables um like a couple rows down from where the stage is and the Ball family had a huge table, so I got a chance to just get a quick selfie with Lavar and talk to him for a minute. But he he was really nice. He, he's he's a um, he's a character. Yeah, he definitely is. So yeah, uh, Max, thank you for uh, for coming on for this YouTube video for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. It's really fun. Just honestly, you've had an amazing story, and keep up the good work, honestly, man. Yeah, can't can't wait to see what's in the future for you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. It, it was fun. Of course. Peace out. All right.